HODL than Bitcoin. Hello, everyone. Welcome to BTC Sessions News. Uh, I've got a special guest today, uh, Zach Vol. I'm going to let him introduce himself and uh, tell you where to find him, what he does. Go ahead. Thanks for having me on, Benny. Um, so I'm sort of a Bitcoin hobbyist at this point. Um, I found out about it in school. Um, I studied economics, finance, and political science, uh, specifically Austrian economics, which sort of segued nicely into Bitcoin. Um, and ever since, over the past few years, I've just sort of been pretty active on Twitter, reading and writing um, a few things here and there about Bitcoin and podcasting, um, too, over at The Coin Pod, um, a weekly show with people around the world who are building, using, studying Bitcoin in some capacity. Um, short conversations of me just picking their brains about interesting topics. Um, so yeah, if you're at all interested, check it out. It's a pretty fun show. Um, I like to think some high quality content and interesting conversations. Awesome. Awesome. Yes. I highly recommend people check that out. Um, today, we are talking a little bit about Schnorr signatures. Uh, now, I, again, this is going to be more of like a, a, a layman's conversation just between two people that have, have dove a little bit into it, but by no means are we, are we uh, developers in that sense where we're diving too deep into the weeds. What I'm hoping to get out of this short conversation here is that some people that may not understand or may not have even heard of Schnorr signatures get maybe an overview of what the implications of adding this to Bitcoin could be. Um, so I guess I'm going to start with where I heard of it. I mean, I've heard of it a lot the past little while. Um, essentially, Schnorr signature is a way of, um, a way of uh, that could be changed on Bitcoin of, of the way that signatures are structured. Um, there was a uh, there was a patent on it. Um, it's, a, it's not a new technology. There was a patent on it for years that eventually ran out, I think either in 2008 or 2010, somewhere around then. Um, but uh, they're looking at adding that to Bitcoin. And essentially what it does is it allows you to hugely optimize the way that signatures on Bitcoin are done. So right now, um, signatures take up a lot of space on the the Bitcoin blockchain, even with SegWit, uh, signatures are still, you know, it, it does contribute to the size of the entire blockchain. Um, so with Schnorr signatures, you have something like, uh, say you have a wallet and you have, you received a bunch of different transactions and you go to send out uh, all of that money to a new wallet address. Well, normally you'd be grabbing each little bit and making sure that there's a signature for each little bit and then sending that out. And that all takes up space. Whereas Schnorr signatures, what you can do is you can kind of aggregate all that stuff that you were signing each little piece of a Bitcoin that you had received. You can aggregate it together and do a single signature that allows you to encapsulate all of those tiny transactions that had come in instead of having all of this space taken up. And you can also do that uh, for things like multi-sig where you need, um, let's say there's a three of five address where five people have a key to this a specific address and you need three people to sign it uh, in order to have it sent. So there's three signatures in order, to, uh, in order to approve the transaction. You can aggregate those three signatures and then have a single signature that uh, takes precedent that more or less allows for that money to go out. It also allows a degree of anonymity with that where you don't know whether it's a single signer or multiple signers. So it's, it's, um, it's an interesting technology to say the least. Um, where did you first start hearing about Schnorr signatures and what have, what's your experience learning about it? Yeah, so my experience is <laughs> pretty solidly a uh, layman's understanding of Schnorr. Um, I think it's exciting just because of all of the super smart Bitcoin core contributors that are excited about it. Um, so, so my enthusiasm is sort of derivative from their attention paid to it. Um, I, I basically my explanation was going to be more or less the things that you explained. It's a signature aggregator um, and it's, it's an important development that was enabled by SegWit adoption um, some time ago, I guess. 
and um, it provides, it's one of a variety of implementations um, to the Bitcoin Core uh, code base that could improve anonymity for, uh, for base layer, blockchain layer transactions um, by, like you said, aggregating transactions. Um, it, sort of as a footnote, I would encourage listeners to check out a variety of the other anonymity uh, protocols that are being entertained like Dandelion and Taproot and a couple of these other pro projects. Um, also about Schnorr to, to just touch on, not that my knowledge of it is extensive by any means, but it does reduce um, the, a, a certain type of threat, a uh, spam threat on the uh, base layer blockchain by virtue of aggregating signatures. So if you have, say, uh, uh, some amount of Satoshis in six to 10 wallets and you want to send them to one wallet in particular, um, a malicious actor or, or even more than six to 10, a malicious actor could easily send those Bitcoins um, or Satoshis to a particular wallet and spam the, block, spam the blockchain um, with all that signature data that Schnorr is trying to cut down on. And uh, there's been um, speculation that that's happened before. Um, I don't necessarily have a strong opinion on that one way or the other, um, but uh, the Schnorr signatures would definitely help combat this type of attack on the base layer blockchain. In addition to adding, um, so it would sort of neutralize that negative potential, uh, potential threat and sort of add a bunch of positive developments as far as um, reducing the size of certain transactions and adding a very important degree of anonymity um, to, to base layer transactions, which I think is super important. I think um, over the next two to three years, um, it's obviously a huge process to implement these new things, especially given the size of the Bitcoin blockchain to date. Um, but Schnorr and Dandelion and Taproot are all, are all pretty awesome in the, in the privacy, privacy um, regard. So yeah, pretty optimistic about that. But that's, yeah, that's my understanding of Schnorr. Uh, pretty great. Now, now, uh, there's one thing that I thought I heard. So I should preface this by saying I listened to uh, the presentation by Peter Wola um, about mm -hmm. Schnorr and Taproot and all, all these other topics. And the Schnorr stuff, I feel like I got at least a base level understanding of. Um, I'm by no means an expert, but I'm trying to wrap my head around it. Now, one thing that he said is I believe in a block – all of the signatures that are Schnorr signatures can also, so like from separate people can also be aggregated and a single, uh, a single uh, signature can also basically encapsulate all of them. Is that correct? I think that's correct. Yeah. So I'll discount your caveat that by saying I haven't seen Peter's talk yet. I have it open on a browser tab ready to watch. Um, just haven't had a few minutes to sit down and see his talk yet. But that is my understanding, sort of like th the layers of aggregation that you can have for certain uh, Schnorr signatures. Um, adding even more sort of condensing even more um the the size or reducing the size of data um per block and um compounding the anonymity of certain transactions i believe that's correct now mm. someone someone massively more informed may be watching this thinking who are these idiots talking about this that's totally wrong <laughs> hopefully that's not the case but it, according to my understanding that's accurate yes yeah yeah so the, i mean the basic idea is being able to mathematically prove that all of the transactions executed uh, were done so correctly or, or were allowed to be executed. Like there's, there's uh, it adheres to the rules of the system um, with a single signature. So just basically whittling it down to a single signature and being able to verify without having to know where those transactions came from or, or are going, you can verify. Yes, indeed everything was done as per the rules of the Bitcoin network without taking up a ton of space. And if that's the case, um, that's massive because moving forward, it keeps the size of the blockchain so low that over time as, as storage becomes even less of an issue and throughput becomes less of an issue, it becomes entirely feasible um, at a later date to be running full Bitcoin nodes on like a mobile phone or, um, and then at, at that point it, you, your bank is literally your phone. And I'm not talking in the sense that you have a banking app. I'm talking like you have a full verifying node that ensures that every single transaction that you do is verified globally by that ledger. And you're not putting that responsibility on a third party. You're trusting yourself in the node you're running. So that's, that's yeah. massive. 
you're a, you're a, you're a fully autonomous financial entity. Um, and that's just something amazing to even think about. Um, I think one of the, one other important, well, I mean, we sort of mentioned this a little bit in passing, but another important development that Schnorr enables, like you said, um, some of the signature aggregation is important for multi-sig wallets or this sort of like rudimentary smart contract, I guess, um, functionality on the, on the Bitcoin base layer. And I mean, we've seen some, uh, I mean, Casa Hodel, for example, um, uses or is developing a very high end, um, high level multi-signature key storage solution. Um, and any multi-sig wallet without Schnorr obviously propagates a lot of signatures and produces a lot of data that needs to be recorded on the blockchain. Now, with Schnorr, all of that data will be condensed, um, potentially opening up a huge venue for more adoption of sort of multi-sig features, uh, maybe more elaborate smart contract development, that sort of thing, um, which could, could be great. So I, I see no, no downside, all upside from Schnorr implementation. Um, obviously, core contributors are laboring over exactly how to um, implement this given the financial size of the network and the complexity of, of attacks on new code being implemented. Um, but uh, yeah, it's, 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 I'm pretty bullish on it. It should be, yeah. should be pretty cool to watch. And my understanding is given that we now have SegWit active, this can be implemented via soft fork. I, I agree. Yeah. I think that's my understanding as well. Um, there I haven't heard, I mean, some people just, I guess I've heard a few minor uh, chirps here and there against Schnorr or just like critiquing how it's being implemented or something. Um, but it is able to be implemented via soft fork, according to my understanding. I don't think it's a hugely contentious implementation um, among the Bitcoin community overall. And once we have Schnorr, um, then Taproot and a whole bunch of other implementations uh, can can come along down the road also um just snore snore is pretty big and like you mentioned um which i guess is one thing it got a little bit of flack for it's not sort of like radically new cryptography it's been around for a, a little while i mean relative to the the discipline of cryptography and computer science um and some no coiners or, or like altcoin skeptics or whatever were critiquing it for why are you so excited about this like age-old technology that you think is radically new um, and the exchange from Bitcoin core contributors responding to that saying, well, that's actually sort of like how we want it, like using old technology, um, that's been tested and is, is as error free as possible is sort of our MO. Um, yeah, just interesting to watch. They're a brilliant bunch of, of people and I'm excited to see this implementation, uh, get going. So. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm going to link down below to uh, the talk by Peter Woola. I'm also going to link to um, a, a video from Andreas Antonopoulos. It was one of his Q&A answer questions, and that's actually what turned me on to the Peter Woola talk. Um, Andreas breaks it down in such a way that I had that aha moment of, oh my God, that's huge if I understand it the way I think. I do, and then I headed over to the the to Peter's talk uh, to get a bit more in depth and also possibly a bit more confused. Um, but, <laughs> yeah, I forgot I forgot about that. Uh, I forgot about that Andreas video. I think I remember watching that, um, and now after our conversation, might need to go rewatch it to refresh myself. But that's if I'm remember if I'm thinking of the same video. That's a, a very clear, powerful explanation of um, the future of Bitcoin with Schnorr. Um, so yeah, definitely, definitely check out that video. Awesome. And uh, Zach, I will say again, uh, thank you for being on. Can you let everybody know where they can find you one more time before we go? Yeah, sure. So I'm on Twitter at Zach Voll, V-O-E-L-L. -L. Um, you can check out my weekly please show at the coin pod. Um, and occasionally I'm over at you, me and BTC, sort of a live weekly podcast, hang out with some of my friends from school where we grab drinks and talk about Bitcoin. So check out either of those places and I'll see you on Twitter. Awesome. Thanks a lot. I'll see you next time. <laughs> Thanks, Betty. It's been fun. Cheers.